So hi there, so it's Andy here for Going Nomad aka Pigs on Bikes and today I'm going to talk all about El Salvador, Lago de Cotopeque or Lake Cotopeque. Uh, we're going to look at Santa Ana Volcano and we're going to look at Captain Morgan's Hostel here on Lake Cotopeque. Watch this. <laughs> Okay, right, so I'm not actually at Lake Cotopec. I'm not on Santa Ana Volcano. I'm actually sitting in Guatemala at Samac Champi, which is definitely somewhere you should visit as well. And there will be a video for that coming out soon. But what I want to talk about today is staying at Lake Cotopec in El Salvador and Santa Ana Volcano. Okay, so we stayed for a few nights at Lake Cotopec because it's a volcanic crater filled with water and it's huge and it's great and not many people go there so there's not very many places to stay um, on the actual lakeside and you want to be lakeside because otherwise uh, you struggle to get actually onto the lake itself if you see what I mean because a lot of the premises on the outside of the lake are all uh, private residents so unless you're actually staying in one of the very few places to stay which is actually properly lakeside then um, yeah then you're going to struggle to get into the lake now there are a couple of places but they're kind of communal villagey town kind of places and they're not actually so picturesque as you would get if you stay somewhere now you've got to stay somewhere anyway so why not stay on the lake place that was of interest to us primarily because of the budget was captain morgan's hostel and so we stayed at Captain Morgan's Hostel for a few nights and it was great actually, it was fantastic. We had every intention of staying there and um, then visiting Santa Ana Volcano and climbing the volcano. Right, as opposed to staying in Santa Ana which apparently, and I've not been there, but apparently, or not been there for any length of time, apparently isn't all that cool. So, right, so um, staying at Captain Morgan's Hostel was okay, it's very small. Uh, it's only about 10 or 12 beds, I think. They've got some, um, they do do some private rooms, which is why you had a private room. It was a quite a small private room, it's a shared bathroom. All of the rooms are shared bathrooms, and then they've got a couple of dorms. And the couple of dorms are, are pretty cool, actually. An old place is pretty cool. So it's kind of built on the side of the lake. So as you're um, walking through the hostel, you going down and down and down onto the side of the lake and then they've got this big wooden platform which is the bar and restaurant -y area okay so check it out it's okay um it's not the best hostel we've stayed in it's not the worst but it's the one that's going to give you easy access to the lake and it's 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 competitively priced put it that way i.e cheap right so you get what you pay for and all of these things and it's got quite small the rooms are quite small but what it makes up for in lack of size really is made up by the cozy feel to the place and also the fact that um, the two lads that were running it when we were there were really cool they're really happy and, and funny guys and they, they, they make you feel very welcome and nothing's too much of a problem so check it out it's cool right you see some photos of it here and video of it here and you, you've seen what it's like okay right so the next thing is moving on to actually Santa Ana Volcano. Now you can get the bus from right outside Captain Morgan's Hostel and you can get the bus to, um, let me think of the name of the place, can't remember the name of the place, I'll put it here. Uh, then you just do a quick swap on the bus and then you get the bus to actually Santa Ana Volcano Park thing. Yeah. Um, and another way of doing it actually is uh, by Uber and we, we actually Ubered there and we got the bus back and both were equally as easy. Uber picked us up not from um, not from Lake Cotopec because it was difficult to find an Uber from there but it picked us up actually from Santa Ana so we were in Santa Ana anyway and we got an Uber from Santa Ana to La Lago de Cotopec which cost us about 20 bucks or something but it was about an hour's drive so it was well worth it you know we tipped the guy a bit as well because he was he was a nice fella and you know um it was a long drive actually so the bus back was fairly easy and we just changed once we got off we got off in the nearest town to like Cotopec and we then jumped on the next bus and it was it's 15 minutes it cost us like a dollar or something yeah chicken bus it doesn't cost you anything 
right? So it's cool. Um, when you go to Santa Ana, you need to take a few things. Right? Don't do the mistake that I made of thinking, good grief, it's like 30 degrees, how cold is it going to be? You go into the park and you go up and you gain a bit of altitude, of course, and I was stupid and I should have thought about this, but it does get quite cold quite quickly with altitude, and then it started to have like that drizzly, damp, misty rain kind of thing, and a little bit of wind, and suddenly the wind chill started to, started to increase, and it was kind of like, mm, yeah, it could be cold on top. And I wasn't the only person, um, but there was me and some other people there who didn't take a waterproof jacket. Take a waterproof jacket, it's worth it, okay? And the other thing is, is it might be raining at the base camp from where you start the trek from, but actually you, get, you can climb through the cloud and you get onto the top, and the top can be clear, and you can actually be a little bit above the clouds. Um, Going during wet season like we are, it's very, very changeable. And I know lads that waited at base at the bottom. It's not really base camp. It's just a bit. It's where the bus drops you off and things like that at the bottom, where the trek starts from. And they waited all day the day after us, and they didn't get to go up. The trek itself is quite quick, right? Um, the guides want to get you up there and down again fairly rapidly. And when you go up there, um, some time ago in the distant past there was a little bit of a security issue where a couple of people got um, they got robbed whilst they're climbing it on their own so now the park insists that you take a tour and part of that tour is armed security it's completely over the top but it really is but for peace of mind you get a fella in a police uniform come up there with a sidearm and he's the guy that was following us was cool you know he's taking photos for us and everything brilliant um, so you have to go up with the tour um, and people say it takes a long while actually hiking wise the actual bit where you're physically going up right takes about an hour and a half it's quite a fast pace there's not a lot of there's not a lot of room for sort of taking a bit of a breather and looking around so so pace it yourself if you see what I mean like if you want to stop like and you you should do really to take the photos and things like that but on the way up there's not so much of a thing but we've only done it once and i think that that was because they knew that the weather was closing in on us and i'll tell you a bit more about that in a minute and then so on the way down we could stop on the way down a bit more but anyway we got to the top and fantastic views and you're looking down into the cold air of the volcano and in the bottom there's sulfurous boiling water and it's all bright blue and lots of yellow around the edges and everything like that and it's it's really cool. When you get onto the top, it's a little bit blowy. Okay, so the reason why I'm not using any of the audio from the video that I took up there is because of the wind buffet on the microphone. So if you're going to video stuff, take a mic that's muffled in some way, yeah? Um, but when you're up there, you're not, again, you're not up there for very long, really. And to be fair, like, unless it's a really nice day, once you're up there and you've took your photos, your videos, and you've had a look around, really, you can, they, they, they stop for a snack up there as well. You can have a snack, right? Um, once you've done all of that, then it's kind of like, well, we're here, we've done it, let's go back down. And, you, and then you're back down. And, and going down is relatively painless as well. I mean, the, the hike up is, I would say the hike up at the pace that they did, it was kind of a medium grade, medium grade hike, but it's not a very long one. So even if you're not a very competent hiker, and I'm really not, I'm really quite unfit at the minute, um, so it, you know it's a little challenging but it's not without it's not you know it's not within your reach you can do it basically and the security lad follows up at the back and makes sure that the party is complete and then the, the guide at the front stops and lets everybody catch up so you're not going to be left behind take it slow if you need to take photos when you want to and they'll just have to really put up with you doing that really although their game their game is to get you up and down as soon as possible because they get paid for doing the tour so of course once you're down again their payday is done that's it they finish their day until tomorrow so they want to get you up and down as quick as possible i think because of that saying that they're all really nice people um it's actually like i say it's about an hour and a half of actual trekking up and the whole thing in total takes about four hours um, and that's with about three quarters of an hour at the summit, uh, half an hour, three quarters of an hour at the summit. When we were up there, the wind and 
the slight drizzle that came on later on so so we were very lucky um, we went up and it was clear we could take all these photos video and things like that it was brilliant um, but on the way down the weather did start to close in on us um, and then when we got straight into the bottom there suddenly the skies just opened torrential rain um, like some of the heaviest rain I've ever seen yeah so we had to hide unfortunately in the cafe and drink a beer until the bus turned up okay and then and then by the time the bus had turned up the rain had stopped because it was about an hour or so and the bus goes at four o'clock so you've got a little while hanging around on base camp just to chill out and you know do what you've got to do drink a beer eat some pupusa it's a great pupusa stall great pupusa stall at the bus terminal bit base campy thing um yeah like 50 cents for a pupusa or something or maybe even cheaper made there right next to you fantastic you know um you need to take some water right so when you set off you need to start with a litre of water and they insist on that and that's not a cent that's, yeah, it's not a, not an unreasonable thing to do it's like you know you're going to be up there if anything goes wrong then you're going to be out on that hillside until whatever's gone wrong has been put right so a litre i would say a litre at a minimum now that means that when you leave in the morning to go there you need to take more than a litre you can buy water there it's quite expensive also it's plastic bottles so filter water fill up with it and at Captain Morgan's that's free as well like they in the kitchen like you can just help yourself to it um, so you take enough to last you until you start the trek and then you need a litre from then on um, raincoat decent shoes the terrain is quite rugged in places and although it was dry when, when we went up I can imagine that if it did start to rain running out it would be really slippery so you need some don't go up in flip-flops basically that's going to screw you up some people did when we went up there but most people were wearing closed trainers um, trainers are fine for it I think you know it's not a mega long hike and if you want to go over the top and take some walking boots then you know that's your choice and if you feel comfortable doing that then do that as well um, so footwear coat water sense of humor camera um, and also don't do what I did which was take loads and loads of photos and find that the lens is covered in rain so just keep checking that whilst you're up there um, I think that's about it but it's, it's generally cool it's definitely definitely worth doing and it's not a particularly hard one not a particularly hard volcano to summit and have a look into the fantastic geology that's below you so cool don't forget to like share subscribe leave your comments below yeah comment say hello in the comments below and also uh, check out the website www.goingnomad123.com and uh, wife's blog cantravelwilltravel.com and the most important thing is to stay safe out there.